Welcome everyone. Today we are glad to have Captain Michael Lau to be here and share how to be a pilot, everything you need to know. And for today's talk, we would like to cover three main areas. One is the pilot responsibility. Second is how to be a pilot. Third is a pilot career opportunity in Hong Kong. So welcome Captain Lau. So the first part we would like to talk about is the basic understanding of pilots. So uh, I would like to know more. What are the main duties of pilot? Could you please share share your knowledge? Sure, certainly. Uh, in general sense, there are two types of pilots. Okay, one is the military pilot, mm -hmm. and the other type is the uh, civilian pilot, who will focus on for the purpose of today's discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in a very basic sense, the uh, primary role of a pilot is to take his or her passenger and or cargo from A to B safely and efficiently. Uh, to do that, he or she will have to equip with the, uh, the good knowledge about flight operations uh, and also together with the uh, problem solving skill uh, for them to perform mm. effectively and efficiently and safely. So that means a pilot need to carry the passenger and cargo to the destination safely and also consider the airline objective efficiently and effectively. So I would like to know more about the main responsibility before takeoff. Sure. Uh, to start with, uh, if you're a pilot, you have to rest well before reporting for any flight, mm -hmm. okay, uh, reporting duty, so to speak, and you have to conduct all the preparation work before flight. For example, to devise a flight plan uh, based on uh, the uh, factors such as weather, uh, loading. Loading, cargo loading. Yeah, uh, passenger weight. Passenger weight. Yeah, uh, the aircraft performance, climb, descent, landing, mm -hmm. and also the routing information. Okay. So all these things is about the preparation for the pre-flight check. Yes. Okay, so how about when the flight takes off and then during the cruising stage, is there any duties of the pilots? Sure, that will be the core part of a flight. Okay, the pilot, he, he or she has to take care of the, the aircraft performance, mm. navigation mm. and the flying. Okay, and he or she has uh, also uh, to communicate with other parties, such as uh, air traffic control. Oh. Okay to deliver your intention so, to oh. the ATC yes. and to follow the ATC instructions. And um, in, inside the aircraft, you have to inform your team, mm -hmm. right? uh, inform uh, or brief the passengers uh, about the flight progress, so on and so forth. And most importantly, mm -hmm. to deal with any sudden change or abrupt change in environmental conditions such as weather, mm. thunderstorm, uh, and in uh, any case mm. of emergencies. Okay, that means they need to well prepare for the uh, is there any emergency happen, they need to well prepare and also react accordingly. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you for your sharing. And how about after the uh, landings, what do they need to do? Oh, basically paperwork. Paperwork? Yes, the filling reports above the flight, uh, be it normal or uh, be it something unusual mm -hmm. or abnormal occurred or happened during flight. So uh, the pilot has to rec record that down. Okay, thank you so much. I think much more thing is about the situation and awareness of flight control and also documentations. That's it. Okay, so I would like to know more about what is the main path to achieve a airline pilot goal or how to get into this industry. What are the options? Uh, based on the fact that Hong Kong, we do not have any military hmm. training for pilots. So uh, we're going to concentrate on the uh, discussion on civilian pilot. Yeah, civil yeah. aviation. Yeah, the entry. Okay, uh, there are basically three options there. Hmm out in the market. Yeah. One, uh, go into a university to uh, conduct a degree course mm. uh, in aviation or uh, any related field. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, by doing that, you enjoy all the uh, good training or learning in university all around it. Mm. And you enjoy the university life. And also, at the end, you receive a, a degree okay, from the university. Mm. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, but it could be expensive yeah, for, uh, for those international students. Yes. Uh, but I also know that like a university degree, if you are equipped with aviation knowledge or even you are majoring in languages or that is related to leadership communication, it's still hard to you to be a pilot. How about the second options? Okay, uh, the second option would be uh, you can opt for a flying school. Flying school? Okay, yeah, apply. Yeah, knock the door of any flying school. Uh, for a pilot training course mm. to uh, achieve a license, be it a commercial license, private pilot license. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in there, it would be very flexible in terms of time. Okay. You arrange the, uh, the course uh, mm. according to your own wish. Mm. Yeah. And also, it's very flying training oriented. Okay. Okay, very specific. Okay. Downside? Uh, the training quality mm. of those flying schools, they could vary mm. yeah, from here to there maybe. Yeah. So uh, my best advice is to pick any flying school carefully. Okay. Yeah, do some research first. Uh, having said that, perhaps to get a degree first. Yes, uh, but uh, like first you may recommend to get a degree or uh, there's another option is get a flying schools mm. But I think in Hong Kong the major key uh, entry path to be an airline pilot is to follow cadet pilot program could you, could you please share what is cadet pilot program about? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up because this is the most popular one mm. Right, uh, the advantages being the airline will pay for all the training costs. Oh, okay. Marvelous. Yes. And secondly, you have a very close bonding with the airlines mm. and even to a certain extent to the colleagues within the airlines mm. to get familiar with the operation okay. environment. And most of all, uh, in general, the cadet program training, the program itself, it carries a uh, very high standard. Yeah, because the airline pay all the training fee, so what they want to see is to have, have the talents or have the um, potential uh, future pilots for in this scheme, so mm. they need to select uh, the, the cadet carefully. But I also think that uh, if they poorly perform, that they may be terminated in such a case. Yeah, uh, it could be quite easily done. Okay. Because it, in the past, it happened a lot. Yes. Yeah, so you have to pay effort. So uh, follow the questions. Uh, it seems to me the cadet pilot program is much more uh, competitive. That means uh, every year, uh, the applicant students, uh, they want to apply for this cadet program because there is a strong bonding with an airline. And also, they may, uh, at the end of the cadet pilot program, they may become get started career uh, in an airline industry very quickly. Could you please our target audience and also our students, uh, what do they need to prepare for this cadet pilot program? Yeah, uh, imagine uh, when you're selected, you pass the cadet program training, you mm. become pilot of the mm. airlines, and you're going to operate the mega ex expensive aircraft. Mm. So in this sense, they would look for the most talented mm. and the highest caliber. Okay. So how to define talent here? Oh, uh, it's a good question. Mm. Uh, let me explain by the interview process. Okay. Okay. Uh, is for every candidate, uh, if you're the candidate, you yeah. have to uh, face a series of very intensive interviews. Mm. Okay. Uh, that would include the evaluation of your aviation knowledge. Mm. Okay. Albeit, you a you are a uh, newcomer mm. to the industry or the, or the operations, but they do expect you have certain degree, basic knowledge or yeah, degree. Yeah, oh. such as what is a Boeing four seven mm. Boeing seven four seven, right? And also they look at your English. English. Yeah. Uh, for simple fact, the uh, English language 
is the international language for aviation. Okay, mm -hmm. in all sorts of communications. Yes, I think this is to achieve the ICAO standard and also because they need to communicate with the ATC, so yeah. they need to achieve the standard so ensure there's no any communication error across different country and also ensure aviation safety. Exactly, or even higher. Or even higher. Yeah, and, and in addition, they will look at your uh, aptitude. Aptitude? Yeah, okay. uh, in other words, your motor skill. Mm your hand-eye coordination, uh, whether or not you could fly the aircraft, land the aircraft. Yeah. Mm. So uh, uh, another important factor they will look at is the uh, problem-solving skill. Oh, what is that for? Okay, uh, for example, they put you into a group mm. of candidates. Uh, each one will play a different role mm. uh, to solve a genuine real-life Okay. Problems or emergencies. So that means they need to react or see how to resolve the emergency issues based on their current understandings and also see their attitudes yes. towards the questions. Yeah, and also and leadership. Also leadership, okay. But how about all these things? Uh, it seems all about the soft skills and also the uh, knowledge. How yeah. about any, limita any limitations to get into the industry? Yes, last but not least. Yeah. You have to pass a so-called class one medical examination. Class one medical examinations. Yeah, to prove that you are physically fit mm. for flying. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. So thank I you. hope our audience know about the basic understanding of pilots. We'll go to the next chapter very soon. Perhaps the general public may have different understanding and somehow they have to mis misunderstood that what the pilot did uh, or also their duty as well. So I would like to have uh, Kevin Lau to answer all this myth and also let our audience know more about pilots. Okay, this uh, for, come, let's come to me, there's a two, for, uh, two questions. One is about the height and uh, second about the short, res short sight restrictions. Like for example, we expected that a pilot to have a good vision because he or she need to monitor uh, the events inside, outside of the plane. And also second, he or she need to get in touch all these uh, cockpit instructions. So we suppose uh, there's a height of restrictions but I hope uh, like for example in my case uh, I'm short sighted but in that case does it mean that I can uh, I can apply for a cadet program or, or entry to the industry could you please explain about the limitations of the eyesight issues yes uh, for a daily life of a pilot okay in normal operations mm. uh, notwithstanding emergency situation mm -hmm. he would need to read charts charts okay yeah maps in layman terms okay to navigate or oh, net landing chart yeah. navigation aid yes uh also uh he or she has to observe or to monitor mm. the instrumentation in front of him the warning display mm. yeah the uh, system display mm -hmm. so all the good information in front of him so require good eyesight and also uh the pilot has to uh, keep a very good lookout mm. outside to uh, look for uh, high ground, other traffic. Oh, also terrain, yes. like that. Yeah, so uh, good eyesight to identify those hazards. But w w if I wear glasses, does it mean that I cannot be a pilot? Not necessarily, oh. uh, because according to the rules, uh, if your imperfect vision, for example, short sightedness, mm. if it can be corrected, by wearing glasses mm. or by means of surgery, it is allowed in order to attain at least 20-20 vision in each eye. Okay, so but how about if I have a uh, color, color weakness? Uh, you mean color blindness? Yeah. Uh, I have to, uh, to say that uh, it is not allowed. It is not allowed. Okay, so how about uh, another question is about the height issues. Let's say if a pilot needs to get in touch with all the panels, 
like uh, he or she need to complete the landing operations, take off operations. There's lots of flight ops issues and process need to be done. So we expect that the, uh, a pilot should achieve a certain height. But is it true that there's a limitations about the height when they enter the, the uh, cadet pilot program? Well, uh, as long as uh, you're able to reach out for all the controls buttons mm. in the flight deck, without leaving your seat, mm. okay? Uh, or you could reach the rudder control, you yeah. know, the rudder yeah, for yeah, yeah. the aircraft direction. Yes. Uh, without major difficulty. Okay. Yeah. And then the height issue would not be a, a major concern. Okay. Uh. So uh, to answer a question is a general misconcept. Okay. Uh, for any height restriction. Okay. Uh, for those uh, reaching out to the controls and uh, buttons, it's very obvious, very mm. obvious for safety. Okay. How uh, we first understand the uh, the two misunderstandings about the height issues and also the eyesight issues. Uh, we also want to know more about uh, what are the major skills uh, that a pilot must have. Uh, for example. According to our, our previous discussions, it seems that the pilot needs to communicate with the ATC, also to the crew, and also mm. somehow with the passenger as well. Mm. So it seems that uh, clear communication is also an important element as a pilot. Mm. Could you please explain what are the key contents or, or what kinds of communication that they need during the flights? Okay, uh, as I briefly mentioned previously, uh, for every day operation mm. of a pilot, uh, he or she has to talk to ATC, mm -hmm. okay, uh, being the vital part, because ATC instructions would relate to uh, flight safety, mm -hmm. yeah, and also your intention mm -hmm. to communicate with the uh, ATC, mm -hmm. also related to flight safety to a certain extent, to keep the separation of aircraft, yeah, the mm -hmm. the uh, mountains, yeah, for example, so. You have to have a very good, very good English standard mm. to be able to communicate in this sense. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you are aware that a lot of the air accidents, mm. uh, partly or in majority, yeah. because of incomplete or inaccurate, incorrect, communication. unclear communication yeah. between pilots or pilot ATC. Pilot ground engineer. Yes, that will be regarded yeah. as a human factor error, human yeah. error. Yeah, so in, in this sense, not only ATC you want to talk to. Mm. I yeah. also heard that like uh, operating an aircraft, or somehow you need to work with a different uh, cultures or, uh, or a, a first or second officer that is from other country. Is that true? Uh, highly possible. Highly possible. <laughs> because uh, the pilot carrier is a uh, International carrier. International okay. carrier, so they uh, need to meet different kinds of yeah. foreigners. Yeah, and that's why the uh, International Civil Aviation Organization, they have uh, formulated a criteria, a sort mm. of standard, mm. to unify English standard mm. to uh, ensure flight safety in the communication part. Yeah, for the IQ English part in this book, we will talk about that part in the later chapter. Mm. Uh, in the, and I also want to know about the situational awareness issues. Like uh, pilots need to monitor all the events outside an aircraft and also in the corporates. Mm. Why this is a, a very important element? Yeah, there is an old saying, uh, if you cannot understand it, you just cannot manage it. Mm. Okay. Uh, to do that, you, you need to have your knowledge and experience to develop into a good level of situation awareness. Mm. Uh, the other words to describe situational awareness is uh, you must have uh, the big picture in mm. your mind all yeah. the time. Okay, for example, uh, you have to know in every minute or even every second of the flight okay. uh, where you are. Yeah. In relation to the space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where are the mountains? Mm, yeah. Also, right. this, uh, the current flight speeds and also yeah, the yeah, all the status, yeah. fuel consumptions. Yeah. So, in simple words, is the aircraft behaving? Yeah, aircraft behavior. 
Uh, I also heard that, like the, you mentioned, the leadership is also a important factor. Yeah. But what, what, uh, like we think that in a corporate, we only have two people, captain mm. and the first or second officer. But why leadership is a matter in this case? Uh, good question. You know, in a fight operation from A to B, uh, the captain mm. or the pilot, first officer, uh, they will face a team of people. Team of people? Yeah, like, for example, cabin crew. Cabin crew, okay. Ground engineer, ATC. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as the captain, for mm. example, the uh, sitting on the top of the command chain, mm. okay, the captain has to create a safety atmosphere. Yeah, because and like the captain, he know everything about the flight status and all the aircraft performance, so he can be the leader. In the, he, he is the only leader in, in this case. Yeah, and then to deliver hmm. the uh, instructions. The instruction, okay. Yeah, to create uh, the sense of commitment hmm. in safety okay. and the passion about maintaining the safety. Safety atmosphere. I think that is to our crew and also our passenger as well. Yeah, very true. Okay, so I, 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 for some cases, if a flight facing an emergency, mm -hmm. it seems that the pilot will also be uh, will show his leadership in the case. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in any form of emergencies, uh, there will be a certain set of procedures laid mm -hmm. down, and everyone has to follow. Mm -hmm. And the captain or the flight crew, mm -hmm. being the uh, the top of the command chain, uh, he or she has to lead. It seems that not only completing the checklist, but also decision making and also create the atmosphere. Yes, okay. and lead to the, uh, safe, the safe outcome. Safe outcome, that means successful landing and also keep all our passenger or cargo safe. Yeah, every passenger clapping. Yeah. Okay, so we now go to another question. I think most of the people will think that Nowadays, flights are equipped with different technology, navigation aids. So autopilot may perhaps can do everything. Then the pilot just sit down there uh, without controlling everything. Is that true? Uh, I'm afraid I have to say this statement is not correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, entirely. Okay. Uh, let me explain what is an autopilot first. Okay, autopilot. Okay, okay. autopilot uh, is merely uh, a kind of design, mm -hmm. design feature or a technical uh, tool mm. uh, to simplify the flight crew's daily operation. Mm. Okay, and it has to be programmed mm. by the pilots. Right. Uh, so this is autopilot. Yeah. What, do, what do they need to input in the autopilot before flights? Oh, uh, for example, the command on altitude. Altitude, okay. Yeah. Uh, the command on the thrust settings and the navigation path setting. Yeah, well, I think also the fuel consumption limit as well. Yes, to a certain degree. Mm. Yeah, so this autopilot is un unhuman, right? It's, it's just a technical tool. Oh, this is a tool just to simplify the pilot commands or operations. Yeah, to have the pilot. Okay, so. Uh, I think the pilot also need to monitor the system from time to time mm -hmm. to make sure the, uh, the flight is operate the same as the autopilots. Yeah, uh, now I can explain a little bit on pilot. Okay. okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, the basic skills of mm. the pilot, three major ones. Mm -hmm. uh, the communication, mm -hmm. situational awareness, awareness, Okay. and the leadership. Leadership, yeah. Okay. If you group them together, human. Yeah. yeah, we are talking about human intelligence. That's right. Yeah. In order to achieve all these basic skills to a good level or required standard, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the pilot himself, herself, needs to go through a lot of training, yeah, accumulate experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout the process, there will be decision-making process, okay. decision-making uh, scenario, thinking, mm. right? So in a nutshell, autopilot, it can alleviate pilot's workload, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's a piece of equipment. Okay. Non-thinking. So, oh, that means the autopilot is just help to release, uh, reduce the pilot workload, 
but for most of the decision making or the situational awareness, leaderships, communications are done by the pilots. So in this regard, the autopilot just cannot replace the pilot. Okay. So now comes to another question is, uh, if you complete a cadet program or, or you got a license, then you want to join an airline. Suppose like uh, you may love a uh, particular aircraft type or you want to uh, select your journey like uh, for international flight only but not only but not domestic if the the, uh, the pilot has such kind of request uh, or c c can they choose to fly any aircraft they want within the airlines yeah first of all for any airlines uh, based on the fact that mm. uh, the conversion the training course cost mm. I mean money mm. uh, involved in changing aircraft type is huge yes Okay, so in general sense, the airlines would prioritize the uh, arrangement mm. or the schedule in accordance with a bunch of factors. Mm -hmm. For example, the operational requirements. Operational requirements. Yeah, the business objectives. Yeah. And the uh, crew seniority. Yeah, I think this is related whether the airline is full service or LCC, a low cost carrier, and yeah. then the market. Uh, the flight network will be totally different. So their own the aircraft or lead the aircraft will be also different. That's it. The uh, commercial needs, mm, yeah. commercial market lead. demand, would drive the uh, the schedule. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Catherine Lau, to share about how to be a pilot and also uh, the everything that our, our, our audience or our students need to know uh, before they join the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. In the previous section, we talk about how to be a pilot. And now we would like to invite Captain Lau to discuss and also share a bit the pilot careers in Hong Kong. So in Hong Kong, usually we're limited only like airlines and also we have something like what we've seen is like helicopters and also the fixed wing as well. But what, and also we would like to know more about what are the opportunities, uh, also the uh, company that we would recruit pilots. Yes, uh, in fact, few airlines uh, or organizations mm. in Hong Kong, uh, they will provide pilot carrier opportunity. Mm. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention the airlines, mm. okay, being the uh, major source yes. of uh, pilot jobs. Also what uh, we discussed in previous sections. Yeah, uh, airlines involve legacy airlines or private jets, mm. right. Uh, they would recruit direct entries mm. pilots, okay. Direct entry pilots, meaning uh, pilots already have a license. Have a license. Yeah, or a certain level of knowledge. Knowledge. And experience. Oh, okay. how about the training hours required? Uh, the flying hours, you mean? Yes. Uh, in Hong Kong, we're talking about a few thousand hours. A few thousand hours. Yeah, for captain. Okay. Yeah, for for uh, first officer, maybe a little bit lower. Mm. Uh, Cause you know, Hong Kong being the uh, major international hub. Yeah we are looking for the highest, highest. standard. Yeah. So the uh, requirement would be a little bit higher too. Mm. And on the other hand, airlines, they may recruit cadet pilots, as yes. uh, we mentioned previously. Mm. Uh, the cadet pilot program to train up pilots to achieve the commercial pilot license. Mm. Okay. How, about, how long does it take to complete a cadet program? Uh, ranges from 12 months to 18 months solely on the training part. Training part. But if you talk about the uh, recruitment selection process, mm. could easily get up to two years. So once again to the industry, also the start, the cadet pilot, also tra complete training and also the flying experience. It may be up to two years. Yes. Okay. How about, how about the other options uh, and careers in Hong Kong? Oh yeah. Um, the other alternatives mm. uh, would be the government flying service. Oh, okay. Okay, GFS. GFS. Uh, quite different because they're not uh, airlines. Uh, they operate fixed wing aircraft and also the helicopters as the major aircraft fleet. Mm. Right. Uh, same as airlines, they recruit direct entry pilots. Mm. Yeah. So as recall, a required number of hours. Mm and the license. Okay. Yeah. And same as the airline again, they also recruit cadet pilots. Mm. 
So, but the demand is not that high. I think they would get only very few uh, cat pilots in their program. Yes, because of the scale mm. of the operation. Mm. Yeah, they, they do not have many aircraft. Hmm. Other than the airlines and also the government flying services, is there any other options in Hong Kong? Yeah, lastly, uh, the uh, general aviation in Hong Kong. Uh -oh. But unfortunately, uh, due to the fact that Hong Kong being a small territory, hmm. yeah, uh, busy airspace, so it's very limiting. Limited, okay. Yeah, in flying. And that's why uh, not a lot going on in terms of general aviation. Hmm. However, uh, you can still find some flying clubs in oh. Hong Kong. They will hire flying instructors. Okay. Yeah, but you need to have the flying instructor rating. Okay. To apply for the job. Mm. Yeah, and also, some private aircraft owners mm -hmm. or business aviation companies, mm -hmm. they will hire pilots directly. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing about the pilot career opportunities in Hong Kong. So in Polio AAE, the departments of Aeronautical and Aviation Engineering, uh, we have our training program, we have our degree program. I uh, also want to know how AAE, Polio AAE contribute to the pilot training industry. Yeah, the Polio AAE uh, provides degree courses, mm -hmm. uh, which will focus on aviation and aeronautical engineering knowledge yes. uh, to equip our students. Mm. Uh, our candidates uh, for them to perform outside of uh, the university in the professional field mm. and the Hong, uh, the Poly UAAE is very strong in terms of airport services engineering and uh, aviation management and also pilot training. Yes, so we have so many professors and also talents or, uh, or the uh, the training instructor, they're working in this industry and also equipped with the aviation and aeronautical knowledge. Uh, also give our students a full experience, not only flying parks, but also how to design an aircraft, mm. uh, aircraft components, navigation aids, and also those type of aviation management. They help our students not only achieve in the pilot career, but also in the aviation airport and airlines. Yes, indeed. Yeah, how about, uh, we have a flying training organizations how, how uh, could you please explain the FTO, the contributions of the FTO in, in Poly UAAE? Yeah, the FTO in Poly UAAE already up and running, mm -hmm. uh, well established, uh, uh, with all the requirements of training instructors, mm. yeah, syllabus. Uh, so it's a very good opportunity for yes. any enthusiast want to be airline pilot. So by all means, join the Poly UAE FTO. Yes, that means Poly UAE not only equipped with the professional uh, body, but also have the industrial practice yes. and also, also the uh, practitioner as well. So thank you so much, Katana, for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you so much.